Hello, this is CJ, and welcome to my first episode review of Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3. Just to get something out of the way really quick, I personally believe that this is the second season of Sailor Moon Crystal, considering the first and second arc were actually one continuous season. But you know what, Toy Animation wants to call this Season 3, so I'm going to call it Season 3 in fairness. Fans have been incredibly hyped for this arc, and understandably so. The Deathbusters arc is one of the best written in the manga, and it introduces three really great characters, uh, Sailors Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn. Saturn being one of my favorites in particular. I have decided that here on my channel, I'm going to try to review as many episodes of Sailor Moon Crystal as I can. I hope you guys enjoy uh, these reviews as much as I enjoy making them, and yeah, let's, uh, let's get to this first episode. Let's start with the good. First off, there are no more CGI transformations. They are all hand-drawn and they're beautiful. Uh, they're smart adaptations, like the addition of dialogue to create some world building. Uh, there's no more episode three tier animation. Oh my goodness, thank goodness. And there's a redesign put in place to make the characters move and feel more natural. And finally, <laughs> thank goodness, there is no more one chapter to one episode Adaptation. What I mean by that is, if you read the manga and you watch Sailor Moon Crystal at the same time, up until this point, when an episode ended, you'd be at the end of a chapter. Which, in most cases, wasn't a bad thing, especially with the introduction episodes. Like, when you're introducing characters like Sailor Moon, Sailor Mercury, Sailor Mars, you want episodes to be focused on those characters. It makes sense why a company would do something like that. That makes perfect sense. But then you get to chapters where there's a lot of dialogue, there's a lot of world building, there's a lot of action, there's you know just stuff that needs to be either clarified or needs to be almost pushed out of the way. When you have a chapter that is really slow, you know, where there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of development, you want those chapters to be more than one episode. And then when there's chapters where it's just a lot of fighting and a lot of action, you can shorten that up. You can maybe make it a half episode. And it's very, very clear that's what Toy Animation is doing with this third season. And, oh my gosh, I love it. It's very clear that there's not a ton of budget being pushed toward this show. Yes, Sailor Moon Crystal is finally airing on TV for the first time. Uh, so they do have a little bit more money to work with. But you can tell from some of the shots that there's still not a lot of money there. But that being said, you can tell that they're being really, really smart with the budget. Uh, the low quality shots are of characters from behind. You know, they're, they're shots that really don't matter as far as, like, you know, the quality of the episode is concerned. It's shots that we're not going to be particularly angry about. Like, say, I don't know. Um, the introduction of a character we should care about, you know? It's it's being used for shots that really don't make that big of a difference, which is great. I mean, it's very, very clear that this team is using their money smartly. Oh my gosh, the rumors are true! Venus totally uses the Holy Sword for her Wing Chain Sword attack. You know, I actually got some comments on my last Sailor Moon Crystal video. People were saying, no, 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 that rumor doesn't make sense because it's actually her wink chain sword attack. She's not using the holy sword. And that's actually what I meant, was that she was using the holy sword in that attack. And yeah, sure enough, the rumors proved true. And that, oh, it's just such a clever adaptation. It's really cool. And honestly, it's really refreshing, considering Venus didn't get her killing blow on Beryl like she did in the manga in Crystal. So it's nice for her to actually get the sword uh, this time around. I mean, speaking of attacks, though, oh my gosh. The attacks just look awesome. I mean, Mars' attack looked great, Jupiter's attack looked great, and... Toei, thank you so much for recognizing that there's more than one hero in this story. It seemed like, in the first two seasons, the only character that we should have cared about was Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon was the only one who did anything. I mean, it was very, very rare for a minor character to step up and actually do something important in the plot. Here we have Venus and Jupiter in a very, actually very, very rare moment in Sailor Moon defeating the enemy by themselves with Sailor Moon just kind of standing in the background. That's awesome. I mean, that's incredible. I know that's how it happens in the manga, but I'm very grateful that Toei just didn't change it up and make Sailor Moon the one to defeat the enemy. So that was super, super cool. Also, Haruka's voice is just perfect. Oh my gosh, I love it. 
Uh, the deep masculine nature of it is super cool, and it's totally, totally believable that she could possibly be a guy. The, di the disguise makes perfect sense. Um, it really, really works great. That voice actress is awesome. And uh, uh, by the way, Viz, if for some reason English voice actor Erica Mendez just suddenly can't do the role of Sailor Uranus in the dub anymore, call me. <laughs> Your deep voice is waiting for you. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, uh, the voice actress did an amazing job. I also really, really liked the ending song uh, sung by the voice actresses of Haruka and Michiru. Um, I mean, it was just incredible. I am such a sucker for anime endings sung by voice actresses. Let's go to the bad. Now, I should clarify, I really, really enjoyed this episode, so most of this stuff is just me nitpicking. I really didn't like the opening song that much. I thought the animation was fine, but I personally think that the opening song is a bit too slow. It feels more like an ending song, and the ending song feels more like an opening. It's it's kind of weird. Um, but honestly, that's a minor complaint. I, you know, I don't judge a show by its opening. But still, it's it's kind of a bummer that, you know, they couldn't have as bombastic as an opening as, say, Moon Pride. I mean, Moon Pride was actually one of the more positive uh, elements of the first and second season of Sailor Moon Crystal. So, yeah, it's a very odd change, but it's not that big of a deal. The transformations looked absolutely amazing, but combined with the taunts afterward, it added up to about four minutes of episode time. So we spent about four minutes watching the girls transform and then do their cute little speeches, which again, nitpicking, it's not that big of a deal because here's the thing, right? I would rather have four straight minutes of beautiful animation, you know, that will be reused throughout the series, but that's totally fine with me, than just a bunch of really, really bad animation like we've had before. Honestly, I don't really mind it that much. You know, as a Sailor Moon fan, <laughs> I have seen many a transformation. So this time around, you know, I, I can deal with it again. Again, it's really just nitpicking at this point. I'm giving this episode a solid A. There could be some improvements here and there, but overall, this is miles, miles better than seasons one and two. I mean, the animation's crisp, the adaptations are great, and I really, really am looking forward to see what Toei Animation does with the rest of the season. I just pray <laughs> that they don't mess it up again. Uh, just as a side note, I'm sure most of you guys noticed I am wearing my super awesome Sailor Moon sweater today. I actually found it on clearance at Hot Topic. I just had to wear it for this first episode. I was so excited. You know, I when I watched the transformation sequences in this this episode, I almost started crying. And it's not because I thought the transformation sequences were all that special or beautiful. I mean, they were very pretty, but you know, it was that this was the episode I wanted to show my friends when Sailor Moon Crystal was initially announced. This is what I thought Sailor Moon Crystal was going to be initially. I was so just devastated by the quality of seasons one and two. And to see this episode now, to see it basically all fixed has been absolutely amazing. And I, I really am looking forward to future episodes. I hope that Toy Animation keeps this up. Because if they do keep this up, here's the thing, right? I'm gonna have to make a sequel video to that top five reasons why you shouldn't watch Sailor Moon Crystal. I'm gonna have to explain that, although that part was atrocious, just awful, um, this new part might be worth watching. And honestly, we can only see from here if that's going to be the case. So until next episode, this is CJ, signing off.